here. Finally, it's here. Novel AI anime image generation finally got updated. I think for the most experienced AI art prompters, it's nothing too crazy. But for more casual prompters and people stuck with novel AI, it's pretty huge. So let's go over what was added because I know people don't bother to read patch notes and some people may not even know what exists because they don't use novel AI. So the first thing to point out that was added is the new novel AI UI. It's whatever. I have no strong opinions on it either way. There are some improvements and new features baked into the new UI, but there's also some slight downsides. The new pin tool is nice, it allows you to keep a base prompts for whatever you're working on on hand, which is really nice for doing experiments and keeping character tags in your workspace. It really shines however when the history gets bloated up. Negative prompts finally have a prompt suggestion just like positive prompts. An extremely helpful feature that I have been waiting for since Alvay came out with their anime image generation service. Alternatively, the option to turn off prompt suggestions altogether is now available for people who don't like the prompt suggestion. The only real complaint I have with the new UI is that it takes more time to switch between positive and negative prompting. As of now, they're compacted into the same text box, toggled by a button, which means it takes slightly more time to switch between the two. It's a very slight time thing that adds up over time and it's not that big of a deal, but the larger problem is that the new prompting UI makes it harder to compare positive and negative tags. This makes it slightly more annoying in heavy positive and negative tag results like Focus Tenerochromia. It's not the biggest deal in the world. I mean, I would just need to memorize which eye colors are being used and which one be excluded. But the new UI is worse at it than the old UI and it makes it take up just a little bit more time. Now, more exciting than the new UI is that upscaling has finally arrived to Novel AI's client, which will allow images below 1024 by 1024 pixels to be upscaled into a more detailed, cleaner, sharper image. For me, this mostly means landscape images got a lot more appealing as the low detail of these images were always really off-putting to me. It kind of acts like a couple extra steps of generation that's only applied if you like the base result. A free perfect variation, you could say. Or, you know, just upscaling if you're not prompt brain rotted. Or the magic enhance tools that Crime Shills used if you're not tech brain rotted. The best part is, for Opus users, upscaling is completely free, as long as the base image is 640 by 640 or smaller, which may not seem that much, but every zero-cost image resolution fits in that range. So it basically means free upscaling on all images Opus users make. And not to mention, other competing services will charge you for images in that resolution. So you're kind of getting higher resolution images for free, even though there's some nuances in the generation. But basically free high resolution images. I will say, the results are genuinely amazing and actually makes me feel like I've discovered anime AI art all over again. More specifically with the Starry Night Galaxy background prompts. I have always gravitated to the unworldly night sky kind of look. And with upscaling, it takes things to a whole new level that I just love so much. There's still the classic upscaling jank with strange line work and depth of field breaking. But with the new hard world novel AI has acquired, it probably worked on a fix in the near future. Kinda think of it like AI fingers. Now for the cool all new stuff. The whole new set of control tools. That's right. ControlNet has finally made its way to novel AI. You access the new control tools by uploading an image as if it was image to image in the past. Drag the file into the browser on PC or upload the image the long way through the prompted file browser or gallery app. Alternatively, you can draw to create the base image for the control net tools. Once you've finished your art piece or uploaded your picture, you're now welcome to a slew of new options and a new and improved image to image setting. What is specifically changed and improved in this new image to image? Well, most importantly for Opus users, image to image is now free as long as it's in the free resolution bracket. So now it's even harder to spend your analysis without actively trying to bankrupt yourself. Other than that, I'm not actually that sure, but Novel AI claims that it's more stable and offers better picture quality. And it kind of has. The telltale blurry mess seems to be gone, and it seems to be more easier to get a result that's actually decent from image to image. I'll point this out since some people don't know this, but in image to image, your prompt still matters a lot. It's best to think of the base image in image to image as another tag in the prompt. It's another piece of the puzzle that needs to be worked around and with to create your desired result. Also, the sliders on the sides do have a meaning. Strength is how much novel AI is allowed to change the base image. More strength is more change. 0.01 will basically be the same image, and 0.99 will ignore the base image altogether. Noise determines how much novel AI is allowed to add details. To be honest, I don't image to image much, so I'm not really the best teacher of this, but for the most part, you want noise to be kind of low. Next is palette swap. It's a nice tool to change the color or art style of an image. I mean, it's kind of useful. An extra tool to make images look better or try out some new artistic ideas. The obvious idea is to add monochrome and manga-like tags to make your own manga panels. I think this new tool is cool, albeit impractical, and I really don't see myself using it all that much. I don't know, palette swap kind of just feels like a snapchat filter generator or something. I think this tool specifically is for extra prompting on generated images as it's free for Opus accounts to use on the images they generate and the results are not that great on imported images. 
but I will need to deep dive on this tool more because it's slightly not intuitive. My current understanding is that it keeps track of the shape and only the shape and everything else is subject to change. So you can redeclare colors on an image you already generated or do a really shoddy job at recoloring a random image. Form lock. While I would be excited for this, I don't think the novel AI version is that user friendly. There's definitely potential, but I couldn't get it to work in a satisfying way. Maybe my brain is just too small. Or the skill floor in this tool is just way too high for me as of right now. Basically, this tool works by sensing the 3D shape of the base image and then uses that shape as the shape of the output image. In more simpler terms, basically you save the pose and then you can change the content but keep the character pose. There is some jank with it because it's hard to determine 3D space with hands layering and stuff, so it's not 100% perfect. But it is better than just nothing at all. I might as well talk about Scribbler here too because it's basically the same thing as Form Lock, but only it looks at 2D shapes. I'm not exactly sure what's the practical application of this tool in particular. Maybe it's meant to be used in tandem with drawing base images? It seems kind of like it since the description says turn fridge art into modern art. So maybe that's the plan. Like with the previous tools, there's no fee to use these features with an Opus account. So I might find out what these things do eventually, right? The last control tool that was added is the building control and landscaper, which is kind of the same as Scribbler, but fine tuned for buildings and landscape. Building makes architecture from the straight lines of the base image and fills in the blank stable diffusion style. Landscaper kind of does the same thing, but instead tries to connect shapes into an environment. It is noted by Novel AI that a lot of prompting is needed for these tools to work well, which is kind of to be expected out of these tools since they have a wide net of what they can create and they really can't make something with no directions and a random line and shapes. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm not sure how practical these tools are since I get similar results to the Scribbler tool, sometimes results that I like a lot more. Maybe you can do some weird stuff by not using badly drawn lines. Not to mention Novel AI doesn't really explain the thresholds unlike other sliders they provide so some people might be at a loss of what to even do with it. Regardless, the inclusion of new tools did make me generate more backgrounds with Novel AI, which is kind of strange since the backgrounds are one of Novel AI's weak points. But regardless of what tool you use, Scribbler, Landscape, or Builder Control, upscaling is kind of important with them since they usually turn out a bit grainy and unrefined. At least that's always been my experience with scenery images in Stable Diffusion. I would like to make some notes of redacting and adding to things I found out while making the assets for this video. 1. You can split the positive and negative prompts by clicking this icon on the negative prompt toggle button. So now the UI is perfect for me on PC. However, I think it's a bit messy and confusing on mobile with all the collapsible tabs. But I think it's just like a learning thing. I don't know, it was just way easier to scroll down on mobile rather than remembering which icon made which option come up. It's just so much work compared to how it used to be. Pins also don't keep tags, I'm not sure what I was thinking when I said that, but it is useful for base image holding for all the new tools. And I guess I should mention that you can generate up to 6 images at once now, but like, don't? It just makes generations that are free cost money, maybe it's kinda useful when doing high res images, but it's not like a huge change so that's why I forgot to mention it earlier. I also should say that Novel AI is still way behind modern image generation even after this update. And if your computer can handle it, do stable division on your own machine and find or create a module that works for you. Novel A is still more of an option for people without a powerful PC rather than being cutting edge.